Hey, Lolo, how are you? I'm good, buddy. How you doing? Uh, my excuse for calling. <laughs> Mac, you don't need an excuse for calling. Is to uh, back you up in what you had to say yesterday about dreams. Yeah. I did some research on it last night. And you, you hear our dream music in the background, Mac? Here's what dreaming has to say. Okay. Well, we cannot bring our true selves into play during the hours of sleep. For sleep, big brain. But are held fast in these by imaginations that cannot be controlled by reason. For our souls possess the feeling that they actually see the things that enter into our consciousness mm -hmm. during sleep. But we make a mistake if we suppose that we are actually sailing on the sea in boats or flying through the air or traveling to other regions or anything else of the kind. Yeah. So yeah. that backs yours up. See, these things, as far as dreams is concerned, is things that we have had on our mind or were doing during the day. And, even, and didn't even know it. And didn't know it. And uh, we carried on into our sleep time, and then it comes back into our subconscious and back to our conscious as we were dreaming. Mac, I, I love it. I got to go, buddy. Thank All you. Right. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. More conversation right after this. one 800 talk as we talk to Ann in Dublin, Georgia. Hello, Ann. How you well, doing? Good morning. I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Lizzo? Good. Thank you. Good. I'm interested in this uh, Ross Perot thing. Okay, good. What, uh, you're, you don't have enough confidence in him, him yet, huh? No, ma'am, I don't have any confidence in him, and that's, that, that, okay. that, that, is, that is not meant to be an insult. No, I know. I know. I'm just saying I don't know anything about the gentleman except that he is a millionaire, and I admire that. And, uh, uh, but, but he's... Uh, He's not asking any questions, and I don't know whether I want him for my present. That's all I'm saying. Okay, okay. He's, because uh, we were, you know, from Texas mm -hmm. and could follow, you know, the stories on him periodically right. when they had him. But I think he's a great American. I really do. Okay, as far as I know, he is a very fine American. Yeah, that? and I, I don't, I don't think he's going to be running around on his wife. On his wife? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but, but what? The papers may dig up something, but I don't think. I, bet I they, think they'll have to I, dig pretty far. Let me just tell you that they would have already dug it up. If there's any, if there's any skeletons in the closet, I believe they already found them. That's not what I'm worried about. True. That's what, not what, what I'm worried about is, uh, is he a babe in the woods who is like me? sitting back, seeing all these problems, and say, well, all the president's got to do is so-and-so. And, and the fact of the matter is the president's got to wine and dine and, and, and waltz around with congressmen and that sort of thing, you know? I, he doesn't He doesn't strike me like that. He he strikes me as a man who is his own boss. If he, th if he thinks that he wants to have that person for dinner, he'll have him. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to wine and dine some congressman just because of the favors that he can get. He doesn't need them. Uh, yes, he does. <laughs> huh? Yes, he does. When he gets to, When he gets in that White House... He's going to need every one of them because he can't buy anything else from in there. He's got to have, he's got to have the support of some yahoos that he wouldn't be seen in public with. That's the way it works. Well, um, That's I, can't, I can't see that yet. Okay, well, I, you, I would, you are I would, more experienced than I. No, am. no, I would like very much for you to be right and me to be wrong. Uh, I, well, we're going to keep an eye, and he's going, he's going to come and tell yeah. everybody. I don't think he's hiding anything. I think that. I think what he's doing is working, and you don't knock success. And, right. Uh, and I hope he turns out to be the finest candidate we've ever had. And, I do uh, too. We sure need one. I'd like to see. I'd like to see a Harry Truman in the White House. Well, I think he's. Those days are gone. I'm afraid you may be right. I'm glad you called. Though you okay. call call us again. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. George on the radio. Hello, George. Morning, Lord. I just stopped by for a few seconds to chat. Okay. Uh, a little bit about yesterday's topic. Yeah, I, I was born with extra perception. 
Really? I was born a Presbyterian, George. We've got something in common. And, uh, of course, uh, telepathy is one of my uh, subjects that I work in. What is that? The ability to read the human or the animal mind uh, by using... Uh, Get out of here, George. <laughs> yes, by looking... George, you don't want to know what I'm thinking right now, do you? No, no, sir. I have to look at you oh, okay. and read your body language first. Mm -hmm. Then I can analyze uh, you as a person or an animal to uh, further upgrade its ability to uh, succeed in uh, today's uh, uh, world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a complicated uh, procedure uh, it's a step-by-step -step method, too. You can, you can make a dog succeed. Well, I would read its body language and what it's capable of doing uh, using the size of the animal mm -hmm. and its movement and uh, putting, uh, of course, words and uh, that type of thing over those. Uh, I've never seen anybody in the United States uh, that could do that except me. I, I haven't either, George. And as far as people go... Uh, I can read a person's lineage, lineage, uh, probably more than uh, an, uh, a person that has a doctor's degree in this uh, field. It's read, just read his. You mean tell him about his ancestors? Uh, lineage means uh, is is the guy uh, 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 telling me the truth, or or is he uh, uh, leading me on? That's lineage. Okay. And, uh, of course, uh, clairvoyance is to tell the future, uh, uh, which I'm not very good at. But at 52 years old, I probably have more knowledge in that field. Like, uh, who's going to be the next president? It'll be George Bush. And I would say, uh, uh, after that, in the next four years... Got to go. Got to go. It took too long for Claire to voice. More conversation right after this. But lo, grab that tar bucket and that track of feathers and follow me. Yeah, a little moving on there. A Nashville brass, led by Danny Davis, the great American. We'll get to the phones. Now we're talking about a bunch of stuff. Kind of zeroed in on Mr. Perot, and I know that's a fact because here's his number one supporter and the love of my life, Kitty Litter. How you doing? Hey, Ludlow. I am so, I'm doing fine. Thank yeah. you. Good. Uh, I am so glad that I got to follow George. I would like to say, you know, George and all his uh, predictions and stuff. Going where no man has gone before. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do hope that George is as accurate about his prediction of George Bush getting reelected as he is of his definition of lineage. Yeah, I thought I'd just let that slide, Kitty. Well, it did. It <laughs> slid real good, Ludlow. I wonder if George is one of George Bush's points of light. Uh, I think his fuse is gone out, if you want to know what I think. <laughs> all right. Uh, and I was really interested that George Bush has to come all the way to Atlanta to talk about family values and education with a Christian school. Uh, I think that's, you know, surely they've got a Christian school somewhere around Washington that he could have talked to and saved a lot of money. Yeah, but Kitty, it ain't as Christian as our Christian school. Nobody's as Christian as our Christian school. Okay. That's true. All right. But uh, as you may have suspected, I am a big Ross Perot supporter. Why? Yeah, oh, I have just, I tell you, I've been out with those petitions and uh, seven days uh, out in front of the Blue Ribbon on weekend mm -hmm. with some of my friends. And incidentally, I would like to say to that last George, forget it. I have already written off for my ticket to the inauguration. How's that for a prediction? <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> And I you don't want to wait until the last minute here, do you? No, and for, I don't care if it's held in the Del Taco parking lot in Houston or someplace. I will be there. It'll be someplace tacky. Uh, well, I hope so, because we're sick and tired of marine bands and all those long dresses. Okay. <laughs> uh, really, it's it's overdone. 
Um, I am very excited about Perot, and every day that goes by, I'm even more excited. What has he said to, to inspire this kind of loyalty and this kind of hard work for you? Because you've worked very hard. Yes, I have. Well, I, as I say, I have been a fan of Perot's for years, and everything he does is an inspiration to me. Um, I'm, I understand that he's going to be on uh, 2020 Friday night with his wife. Uh -huh. And as I mentioned to Aunt Frida this morning, I'd be willing to bet that Ms. Perot's hair is whiter than Mrs. Bush's is. After the life she must have had with him, he ran over to North Korea to take Christmas presents to the prisoners of war. They wouldn't let him give them to him. Then he went to Iran to uh, get his employees out of the Hoosgau in Tehran. And I bet his wife is a nervous wreck after living with him all these years. Wouldn't be surprised. Because he's not one to sit back and twiddle his thumb. Uh, no, I think the man is... Uh, very aware of the way things ought to be and aren't, and if there's one thing I'd like to see him do, it is to enforce that constitution that we have uh, that prohibits a president from declaring war without the consent of Congress. That's one of the main things that, I, that has really bothered me um, in many years. But I think Perot will get up there. He's got good sense. His head's on straight. And furthermore, he thinks like I do, Ludlow. How can he leave? I don't see how, Kitty. I don't see how. I'm glad you call me always. Well, be sure and watch uh, Friday night, 2020. Oh I, oh, I will. I'll be glued to it. Okay. I'll, we'll talk about it some more next week. Oh, indeed. You be sweet. I'll talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Jeanette in Flowery Branch. Good morning, Jeanette. Good morning. How are you? I'm glad I got on after that lady. I'm glad you did, Hooray too. Hooray for Perot. All right. <laughs> Why? Well, we need some new blood. I mean, these Republicans and Democrats, don't get me wrong, I'm a Democrat. But we're sick and tired of the same old read my lips, no new taxes, except for Bush, you know. He doesn't get any new taxes, but we sure did. And we thought we need something different. Okay, it can't so be any worse. Oh, but it could, Jeanette. <laughs> it could be a lot worse. Nope. Uh, not not after the eight years we went through. It could be a lot worse. It could be it could be Bill Clinton. Well, <laughs> got a great shot at it. He's got a great shot at, it, particularly with Perot in. Well, you, you you think you think Bill Clinton's got any answers? No, but he couldn't be no worse than Bush's then. Oh yes, he could. Yeah, Jeanette. <laughs> if you have been in the shape that my family has been in in the last three years or four years. We've about lost everything we got. I'm disabled. We can't get any help. I'm on Medicare. And it's all Bush's fault, Jeanette? No, it's Washington's fault. And Bush doesn't do any good. Why is he not paying what, taxes? What has Washington done? That's just it. No, nothing. I, no, but... Well, nothing. What have they done to put your family in that shape? Because no jobs. Because that's awful. No jobs. Government doesn't provide jobs. They don't have any jobs, Jeanette. No, but... All right, the guy on before Kitty. Uh huh. I mean, if people like that, thank God, I hope he's not getting a, uh, money to do all this stuff. One research they was doing was um, they were getting money to find out why what they could do to keep jelly from going through your bread on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I said I learned that when I was a kid. <laughs> Jeanette, I love you to death. You take care of yourself. I'll be talking to you again. This is the first time I've called, first time I've heard you. Well, you but I love it. You don't be a stranger because we're here every day. I love it. You be sweet. I'll talk okay. to you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 1-800-572-8255. Bye. Join us. This is Lonnie Anderson with a tip for new parents. Your baby's teeth are susceptible to decay as soon as they appear in the mouth. Protect these teeth by following a simple rule. Never allow your child to nurse for long periods of time on milk, fruit juice, formula, or other sweetened liquids. They can lead to a condition called baby bottle tooth decay. So between regular feedings, during naps, and at night, give your baby a pacifier or a bottle with plain water. Hi, this is Ryan Sandberg. If you use smokeless tobacco, you're at risk. 
The fact is, smokeless tobacco is a proven carcinogen. One can of snuff per day delivers as much nicotine as 60 cigarettes. Smokeless tobacco also increases the risk of heart attacks, strokes, high blood pressure, and tooth loss for kids as well as adults. So think, is using tobacco really worth it? A message from your local dental society and the American Dental Association. Time is running out. Fun Seekers Network. We're going to get right back to the phones and talk to my beloved friend, faithful colleague, Rodney. Hello, Rodney. Hello, buddy. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fine. Good. Uh, w what you said about George, you certainly couldn't say about Larry Fortinsky. What was that? About going where no man's gone before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think George is trying to give Ted the Rooster some competition. Well, I think he got the roost to beat hands. <laughs> yeah, I know. I hated that you cut, that you had to leave before you could tell us who was going to be president in '96. I was ready to call the Las Vegas sports book, see if I get some odds on it. Uh, George will call back. He will. Who could? No, you can count on that. I no, guess. No question about it. You know. You know. I have no fear about Bill Clinton being elected president because uh, a week ago Monday they decided to change direction instead of painting him as a, a competent administrator and good governor and is gonna knows what to do and solve all the problems like someone said some mayor said he was for bill clinton because he knew the problems of the big city and he gave the solutions of the, being a governor he knew the problems of the big city like little rocks a big city it's just a glorified little town <laughs> well he scares he scares me well they, they were going to change his image and, and kind of remake him and launch him about getting him, having him being emotional over traditional Democratic issues to bring the old Democratic coalition back together. But it hurt him tremendously because when they had this opportunity to really nail Dan Quill this Murphy Brown thing, uh, Clinton couldn't very well make his comments from, from the conference or the, uh, the, the convention of the Gay and Lesbian Alliance that he was addressing in Hollywood at the time. Mm -hmm. He really would have come across good giving, giving a family value statement to the media there with, uh, in that setting, wouldn't he? Yeah, I'm afraid that's a program, <laughs> program for failure. I think that uh, there's a little campaign failure on his campaign part, but uh, I think, I think he, he, he's, he's worse. I agree with you. He, he, it could be worse with Clinton, but, but he has to go a long ways because George Bush... George Bush has proven he doesn't have a clue. Say what you, you say what you want to about what Perot's doing, but it's working. Oh, sure it's working. Uh, and I'm not sure how much of it is, is his doings uh, and how much of it is, uh, uh, is the fact that we all are so dissatisfied. Well, I think it's a combination of the political environment with Congress, the House, as well as the Senate, and, and, and then, then, of course, the ineptitude of George Bush. You know, you said that, uh, that Perot has given no answers. Ask, hasn't answered any questions? Well, the Democrats and the Republicans, Clinton and Bush, when they when they supposedly answer questions, they really give no answers that you can depend upon in a round. That you Read can my lips. That you can depend upon? No. Okay. They, they, Un underline that. That's the operative part of that statement. That's right. They don't because, okay. because uh, uh, they give they give what they think is 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 is, is, is um, appeals to their constituency yeah. at the moment, and then then after they're reelected, they're no telling what they're going to do. Okay, I don't uh, I don't disagree with that. All right, and I think I think parole, parole would I think would be a welcome change, and we can get into that in future conversations. But, yeah, but I want I want you to tell me why parole, why not Fred Johnson? Well, in, I, in future conversations, I, I I think quickly is the environment, political environment is right. I think he has the resources, both in terms of money, reputation, and experience. And he's made a business now out of out of almost thin air. He's made a multi-billion-dollar business. We got a lot of senators did that. Huh? A lot of senators did that. Yeah, they did it. They did it serving in the U.S. Senate. <laughs> That's what I meant. I gotta go, Rodney. Hi, buddy. Right, buddy. I get day, day, Oh, it's political bashing day. Don't you love it? Let's talk to. Uh, I think Nancy from Cleveland, Tennessee, is next. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Ludlow. Can I change the topic of politics? We don't have a topic. You talk about whatever you want to, my friend. Okay. I would love to send you a blue ribbon award. I hope this doesn't embarrass you. Do you get embarrassed easily? Oh, shucks, ma'am. <laughs> no, you did a commercial over Memorial Day weekend. 
that just jarred me and really made me think. It was the one that you did about safety on oh. the road that started out with the um, Christmas, Christmas care. Yeah. That was fantastic. Well, that was, that, that was probably one of the best safety commercials I've ever heard. Well, I thank you very much. That was the design to... Uh, to uh, catch your ear because you don't normally hear Christmas music on the radio this time of year. No, you don't. And it really did because and that's the first thing you hear. You think, why is they playing a Christmas carol? And then as it went into it, it was very touching. Did you write that yourself? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank and, you. And another thing, um, you said something earlier about why well, I can, can't get through the day without. Yeah. I can't get through the day without Lisa hearing you part of the morning. Aren't you kind? Aren't you kind? <laughs> I know that. We're going we're gonna to send you a ham. Oh, hey, that'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> a real ham? Uh, no, Tennessee ham. No, it has to be. It has to be a Tennessee ham. No question about it. I'm glad you called. Do it again. I sure will. Have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Nell in Macon, Georgia. Good morning, Nell. Hi, uh, this is Jerry in Rome, Georgia. Ah, you sure? Says Nell and Macon here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jerry. Nell, Nell hung up and you took her place, and my, my computer didn't kick it out. Oh, that's okay. Well, anyway, uh, I'm not, I'm not supporting uh, Perot yet, but I do support the fact that he's uh, that he is on that he's getting on the ballot in so many areas. I think we do need a choice. Oh, I support that too, very much. I'm, oh, I'm in that, favor. you know, that's that's my main that's my main uh, deal with him. You know, I got a bumper sticker on the back that's you know, on my car now, and I never put bumper stickers on. But the thing that that that, um, that I'm unhappy with is that uh, I know that it, things can get worse if we if we put old Clinton in, Slick Willie. But I'm really dis disappointed that, that Bush is um, is sleeping, you know, with the Congress it's as far as our budget and our, uh, you know, and and the taxes and and whatnot go. Yeah. I mean, they, you you know, there's a give and take up there. You know it. Yeah. You know, uh, oh yeah, gotta be. Yeah, oh yeah, you have to. Yeah. We don't like it, but it's, but I think we're practical enough to know. Exactly, but I, it's uh, like if you and I were colleagues in a, in a business, there's going to be give and take between us. Sure, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that because he's had, you know, Pearl has his own money, that there won't, he won't be needing so much, you know, he won't be needing so many favors, you know, and so he doesn't have to strike so many deals. I know that he's going to have to. But I'm hoping he won't have to do it so much. What I want to know about is politics. You see, let me give you let me give you an idea. Uh, federal government broke, bankrupt, no end in sight. You and I both know that. Right. Unless, unless we put more of a yoke around the taxpayers, around the taxpayers' neck. See, we got uh, now you got a maximum of what twenty eight percent. That's almost a third of what a, what a man brings home. Yeah, it's confiscated. You got, you got 10 horses, and every April 15th, you give the government three of them. Exactly. I, uh, and I, I've used that before. We so, can't so afford it. So it's awful. No, we can't afford it. So here we got here we got the mayors. Oh, and this Rodney King came along at a great time for the mayors because they're now able to blame it all on not enough money. And the mayors come along and say, you're giving money to Russia, and you're not giving any to us. Well, the fact of the matter is... We're giving millions to the cities. Yeah, yeah, we're saturating them with dollars. Okay, I want a president who will right now, today, say, look everybody in the eye to hell with the consequences and say, we're not going to give the cities anything. It's up to the cities to look after the cities. It's up to the counties to look after the counties. It's up to the counties to be in shape where you cannot buy $30,000 palm trees. Yeah, exactly. Well, you cannot, you cannot build these cathedrals, these monuments to, to politics and politicians. No, the federal government's not going to give you any money, and if you don't like it, vote me out of office. When I hear somebody say that, they're going to be my candidate. Well, when, when, I, when I hear somebody say, sure, it'd be nice to have a new expressway from Seattle to Spokane, but we can't afford it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that most, most Americans really, really feel the way that... Uh, that you're expressing in the way that I do, I which is the same way. I would like to think so, but I doubt it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I've talked to a lot of people, and a lot of people are pretty darn upset about, uh, yeah. about the free will spending, you know, mm -hmm. spend, 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 and, and worry about consequences later. I mean, that's how come the check writing thing hit so close to home. I mean, and they, that was just symptomatic. Yeah. They can't balance the budget. They can't even balance their own budget, no. you know. How can they balance 
a multi-trillion dollar uh, uh, budget. They can't. You know, I mean, if they can't even do their own, that's it. It's just symptomatic, and, and people are just fed up. Yeah. But hey, but what's encouraging was the uh, was the was the two uh, congressmen that lost their primaries over this. Yeah. You know, the people did not forget for once. How sweet it is. How they su- did not forget. Jerry, I gotta go. But I hope you call us often. You're a good caller. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Bye bye. Talk to you. One eight hundred five seven two eight two five five. Now that you're spending more time outdoors, you see it. The siding on your home needs work, and soon. So rather than waste money painting, call a full-line home improvement company that specializes in vinyl siding, maintenance-free overhang, and trim on brick homes, as well as insulated replacement windows. Dixie Home Crafters. Dixie Home Crafters believes that integrity and pride in workmanship still count when it comes to working on your home, and they'll prove it when they put all new vinyl siding on your home. You know that vinyl siding is maintenance-free, saves on utility bills, and increases your property values. And you can count on Dixie Home Crafters to make sure that your vinyl siding, overhang, and trim, and replacement windows are installed right the first time. Call Dixie Home Crafters at 921-0890 and take advantage of the best prices of the year. Financing is available, too, so call Dixie Home Crafters and ask about vinyl siding, plus all your other home improvement needs. Dixie Home Crafters, 921-0890. 921-0890. Time is running out. The facts are, Carrie Paul Honda in Snellville has through 6 p.m. this Sunday, the 31st, to meet their sales quotas. Mr. Paul said, lower the prices. We must sell in volume regardless of profit. Through Sunday, 200 new and used Hondas in stock, all drastically reduced. <laughs> Talk to Marshall on the radio. Good morning, Marshall. Hello, man. How you doing, buddy? Good. I want to put my put my thoughts on the tragedy which almost occurred the day before yesterday. Tech went on. Are you familiar with that when the child got busted? It was a tragedy, yes. When, yes. when, when the door the child, fell on the child? Yes. yes. Uh-huh. Uh, two things that, that crossed my mind that upset me deeply is the fact that it was, you have two kinds of negligence. Gross negligence, which was caused when they took that door off there and set it up in the hall. Contributory negligence was the fault of those people, the parents of that child, and the residents of that apartment complex who allowed that door to just stand there. And that is the thing that really concerns me, is that they do. the parents or the people who lived in that apartment complex had just laid the door down. We need, we need to tell everybody, Marshall, people listening to us all over the southeast, this was a... Some public housing, Absolutely. A, lar- a large door had been taken off the hinges. And just left laying there for several days. Fell on, fell on a small child with uh, and, and with severe severe head injuries. Absolutely. As a result. Yeah. And if they had, if they had just taken the time to put that door down on the floor, yeah, that would never ever have occurred. Yep. And they have no one to blame but themselves. Tragic, and tragic, it's tragic. Tragic, tragic. tragic. And, and, the, and I understand that baby's in surgery right now or going in today sometime. Absolutely. Let me expound one more point on that. Okay, quick. Last night at Techwood, they had a vote as to make part of that uh, complex part of the uh, Georgia Tech Center. Mm-hmm. And one of the comments was, what we need is safe and sanitary housing. If you look at those pictures, all the windows are broken out, trash, debris, and they want us to give them safe and sanitary housing. Sanitation is what residents make it. Come see us, Marshall. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care, buddy. Let's talk to Al Petros. Hello, Al. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing great, buddy. How you doing? All right. Hey, I got a. I thought it was a cute joke. You might have heard it. It, it had to do with yesterday's theme about ghosts. Yeah. Uh, it's on the mic on the Phil Donahue show. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was held up, you know, at the audience. He says, uh, says, today we have an unusual subject going. He says, uh, how many of y'all actually uh, believe in ghosts? So about 60% of the people raised up a hand. He says, okay, so now we're going to go a step further. He says, uh, how many of y'all have actually seen ghosts? And about 10% of the people raised a hand. So says, really? So that's very unusual. He says, okay, so now we're going to go a step further. He says, how many people has had actually a sexual encounter with a ghost? And one old guy stood up back there, had a University of Alabama t-shirt. 
And uh, Phil says, really? He says, come on down here. I want to talk to you. So he came on down. He says, do you mean to actually tell me that you've had a sexual encounter with a ghost? And he said, oh, uh, excuse me, Phil. He says, I thought you said goat. <laughs> you bad man. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Thank you. I was all set to cut him off. We all talk to each other. I'm gonna get some crackers right back after this. If you want to find out what a fella does when he can't get a real job, tune in the Ludlow Port Show. If you want to get in on the fun, call him at 1-800-572-TALK. Now that's 1-800-572-8255. And now, here's Ludlow. All right, thank you, Sheriff. Talking about just almost everything under the sun. We started out with two or three little sub-sub-topics, and we have moved right along talking about them. Uh, Mr. Perot, who wants to be our president, uh, or he's going to tell us that soon. And uh, what do you think? Well, as a matter of fact, what's on your mind about anything? Let's talk to Jim in Dublin. Good morning, Jim. Hello, Luddy. How you doing? I'm doing great, partner. I hope you are. Yes, sir. And talking about Washington situation. Yeah. I got a great idea for the Congress. Oh, they, need that, they need that worse than anything <laughs> I know. Let me, let me tell you something. Uh, we can go to the jury pool and pull people to serve in Congress and come out with better results than we get by election. Ooh. Let, let me tell you. Nice, Plus, we uh, don't have to pay them $100,000 a year. We can pay them $25 a day or whatever it is like you do the jury. They don't want to serve the one term. Yeah, the jury, though. Yeah. That's right. Jim, I, you're on to something here. Hey, let me tell you. Let me tell you something. People take the jury. Most good citizens take the jury as an obligation, right? Uh-huh. You know, I, I don't, it, it, it won't get to be a money-making game to go to Washington. It'll get to be an obligation to go to Washington. Are you saying it would be a good idea if we had no career politicians? Correct. You got pretty, it. Pretty radical it's thinking. It's amazing how intuitive you are. <laughs> Jim Boy's pretty radical. <laughs> oh, it won't fly, but it's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, you know why? We both know why it won't fly. Because it's a good idea. <laughs> it won't fly because the yahoos who got to vote on that ain't about to vote themselves out of work. Well, and let me tell you how you vote a pay increase, then, when you get to that point. Yeah. A national referendum. How about this one? Denny just handed me a note. Said, and with the technology today, the trip to D.C. wouldn't be necessary. That's right. They could do this thing well, from New York City. We can use Perot's electronic uh, uh, town meeting system. <laughs> There's a germ of an idea here, Jim. When are you, when you going to run for Congress? <laughs> I'd never make it past the front door. <laughs> but, but it, it, I mean, the whole concept, Luddy, and I'm serious. I'm serious. We've got to get back to basics again. Do you, when James Madison proposed the 37th Amendment that just passed, uh -huh. where you could not vote a pay increase and receive it within your elected term. Uh, they didn't exactly railroad that one through, did they? <laughs> Let me ask you something. <laughs> That's right. But do you think he had in mind career politicians when he did that? He was fearful of career politicians. Oh, I think so. I think he was fearful of career politicians. I think so. Plus, the career politician becomes arrogant. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Becomes arrogant. Well, you know, uh, I'm proud to be part of a minority that nobody agrees with. Oh, you're just a radical. You're just a radical right winger. Oh, that's huh? right. <laughs> You have a good and day. It, and it takes one to know one. I, right. <laughs> I'll talk to you, buddy. Okay, you have a good one. All right, thank bye, you. Bye-bye. Right. Skeeter in Augusta. Hello, Skeeter. Hey, Ludlow, how you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing? I am good. Uh, i got a couple of things to bounce off of you. All right, let's do it. Uh, first of all, i got a word of advice for George. Uh, consider lithium. Okay. And, uh, okay, it doesn't matter who we get elected president. If we don't do something, uh, like the previous caller said, about Congress, he won't get anything done anyway. Yeah. Okay, and uh, and everybody wants Perot to come out and say what he's going to do. Well, what happened when Bush said what he was going to do? Some of us, you know, read my lips, no new taxes. What but, happened? But at least now you know, to, if, if you don't like that, now you know to vote against him. Well, well yeah, but uh, he promised he wouldn't raise taxes. He said I wouldn't, wouldn't sign a quota bill. Well, you're not saying for a minute that I should vote for somebody who refuses to tell me what his stand is on the issues, are you? 
That's not what you say. You, uh, no. Even lie to me if you have to. Tell me, tell yeah, me well, something. I, I would rather somebody, yeah, tell me how they stand and make a lot, of, make a bunch of promises that yeah. we know we can't. Yeah, we know we can't keep. Yeah. So, uh, I think. We, uh, I think I'm, anyway, I'm for parole, and uh, I think you stand for truth, justice, and the American way, and uh, we can't refuse that. Well, if he will, if he will tell me, uh, if he will give me some idea of what he believes on certain issues, uh, I think I can support him well, comfortably. Well, and what, I, what issue is your main concern? I want to know. I want to know. For example, I want to know why was he why was he against that Gulf War? I want to know that. I want to know, and I think he can explain himself. I don't think he's well, a dummy. I want to know that. I want to know. I want to know how he stands on on the balanced budget. I want to know how he stands on line item vetoes. I want to know how he stands on abortion. I want to know how he stands. I'm entitled to know that if I'm going to vote for him. Well, uh, and and we may agree on everything, but we don't have to agree on everything. If we agree on if our philosophy is the same, if he thinks that the average American is overtaxed mm -hmm. and sick of it, and sick of it. And we're not going to take any more taxes. We are damn fed up, <laughs> and they better do something about it. And that something is cutting government spending to the bone. Well, I agree. And telling the mayors it's up to you to look after your cities, telling the counties the same thing, and telling the individuals in those counties and in those government offices it's up to you to look after yourself. We're going to turn America around. We're going to do what made it great. We're going to let the next generation of Americans know that it's up to them to look after themselves, not up to the government. The people ought to run the government. The government shouldn't run the people. Hey, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And, uh, it's not for the government to give everybody something. It's, the government. it's, a, it's only to give us the opportunity. Exactly right. Weekend. Exactly right. Then get out of our face and let That's us right. do it. Love it. You take care of yourself. Thank you. Everything all right in Augusta? Oh, it's great. All right, call us again. All right. Bye-bye. 1-800-572-8255. Bye. America has become a nation of fitness buffs. The fitness boom that started a decade ago shows no sign of slowing down. Everywhere you go, people are running, walking, working out, playing tennis, swimming, skiing, skating, generally having a ball. Your podiatrist reminds you there's one thing that's absolutely necessary for participation in fitness or sports activity, a healthy pair of feet. No matter how much you enjoy and benefit from being active, it's not as much fun if your feet hurt. It's a good idea to get a checkup before beginning any physical activity and see a doctor of podiatric medicine if your activity causes any pain or discomfort in your foot or ankle. For more information on foot health and physical fitness, see your podiatrist. Or call the toll-free Foot Care Information Center at 1-800-FOOT-CARE. That's 1-800-F-O-O-T-C-A-R-E. A public service of this station and the American Podiatric Medical Association. Time is running out. The facts are, Terry Paul Honda in Snellville has through 6 p.m. this Sunday, the 31st, to meet their sales quotas. Mr. Paul said, lower the prices. We must sell in volume regardless of profit. Through Sunday, 200 new and used Hondas in stock, all drastically reduced. Like a four-door Civic DX, number 2294, 98.89. You heard right, 98.89. Loaded four-door Accord LX, number 8074, not 17,000, now 13,992. Even the all-new Prelude, number 6055, only 14,497. 14 497 Plus, through Sunday, when we make a deal, we'll pay off your trade, regardless of what you owe. And remember, Kerry Paul Honda is your used Honda headquarters with over 30 late model Hondas in stock, all under warranty, all with incredible savings. Plus, this weekend, free hot dogs and Cokes. You can count on it. All prices have been lowered to meet our May sales quotas. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 1 till 6. You won't find a lower price, period. Rush to Kerry Paul Honda, five miles east of Stone Mountain on Highway 78 in Snellville. Prices plus normal tax title license. We'll try to send you home with a smile. Hi, Sandy Garfield here, reminding you to join us Monday through Friday on the Gary McKee Hometown Radio Show, 4 to 7 on News Talk Radio AM 750 WSB. Rolling in my sweet baby's arms. Don't you love it? Let's talk to my buddy, world's finest guitar player, Mr. Wayne Parham from Athens, Georgia. Hello, Wayne Parham. Well, bless you, buddy. How you feeling? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm feeling good. Thank you. Good. And you just brought up uh, a subject matter. I uh, mentioned uh, the guitar and so forth. Yeah. Uh, I was in Nashville a while back, and I walked into a, a studio up there, and a friend of mine runs it, and 
He said, try this thing over here, and it was a little half-size plastic-looking guitar, and I sort of laughed. I thought thought it must be his kids or something, you know? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I picked it up, Ludlow, you wouldn't believe. First of all, it had springs on it, but they were made out of rubber, and they stood, stood up a little higher, and you just depress that. It's just a soft touch, but you get the same effect from uh, playing strings. And I have never heard such a beautiful sound in all my life. Is this a new concept in guitars? Sure is, yeah. I wish I knew the name. I'll try to find out and call back and let you know because uh, there's some people listening out there that would be delighted to know about this. Yeah. I I won't push the product because I'm not involved in that. I just uh, would like for people to know about it. But you might keep your eyes open, ask your music store people and so forth. And I want to get on the parole situation, if I may. Sure. First of all, as you know, I'm doing some music for that campaign, so I'd better be for him. Uh, uh, I concur with you uh, concerning the things that you just mentioned, the lineup of things that you want to know. Uh I, too, want to know. I'm, I'm reading everything and trying to consume everything possible. But here's my premise. First off is it's a sad commentary that America is broke. And we came for it from a time when it was most affluent, everything working, and uh, I just plain is broke. Now, it's uh, the truth. Uh, I figure a man that's made several billion dollars has done something correct. And I think that he could teach us how to do it. I want him to teach me personally. Oh, I'll suck up to him if he will. I'll... Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Ludlow, you've got the rest of it. <laughs> but the thing is that uh, we need to get this country back on its feet financially. And I think that Ross Perot can do it. And I think he has the ways and, well, and the know-how. But you say, okay, uh, it's altogether different making money in the private sector yeah. than it is trying to balance that stinking budget. Because he... With his company, he could call all the shots. Yeah. He's got to turn into a real team guy when he gets to, to Washington. Right. Uh, and I'm not saying he can't do that, uh, because obviously he's, he's a very, very bright man, obviously. And he may know how to handle people. But I want him to talk about things like that. I want to know, that, yeah. I want to, I want to know from Mr. Perot, because I'd like very much to support him. I'd like very much to support him. Uh, I think... Uh, but I want to know from him. I want to know from him if he thinks it's important as I do. Well, I think you're wise to want to know those answers because some people jump on a bandwagon without knowing, and that's ridiculous. Yeah. But I think that with the announcement comes all the information, and I think we're going to have it. Uh, I think it's imminent, and uh, you're so right. I think you're right. I think the press is going to demand the, uh, the answers, and I think he'll have them. Oh, yeah, I, I too. I just, uh, I've read about what he was doing way prior to... Uh, is uh, being in the limelight and so forth. And it's an interesting story. Yeah. You can get some of those back magazines and so forth, and yeah. the library has them all, you know. My man, I need to run. You take care of yourself. Good stuff. to talk to you, buddy. Thank tell, you. Tell everybody in Clark County we said howdy. I'll do it. I'll Bye-bye. Talk. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wayne Parham. one 800 572 Wayne T-A-L-K. Denny have an absolute running fit because Denny says it is time for me to tell you about the wonderfulness of the allergy-free electrostatic permanent air filter. Let me tell you what this is, gang, we get new listeners here every day, and I want you to know what I'm talking about. This is a, this is a filter that you put in your furnace. Uh, it's, uh, it's metal. It lasts forever. It's permanent. Just take out your old ineffective filter and throw it away. If you put this one, you don't have to plug it in anything, and no insulation is required. And uh, it takes the dust out of your house. Yeah. You get a few days to get out of the out of the ducts, and then you're going to find that there's no dust in your house. Happened in my house. Happened in thousands and thousands of houses. Now, you may not mind dusting, but you mind breathing that mess because you know what that does to your allergies. Drives them crazy. Now, if you'll measure that filter and get your credit card handy, you can call the folks at 1-800-324-4247. Tell them you heard about it on the Ludlow Show. And they'll give you a discount to get this thing for less than 60 bucks. Less than 60 bucks. Now, not only <laughs> don't you have to buy any more filters, because you got a permanent one, you just wash out with the hose every 30 days. You don't have to buy any more pledge. 
Don't have to buy any more Johnson's glow coat. <laughs> Throw away your dust rag. Sit there and drink some iced tea and watch As the World Turns. While upstairs, you're getting the filter action of a lifetime. You call these folks. I'm serious now. 1-800-324-4247. 1-800-324-4247. Tell me you heard about it here. And you get it for 60 bucks, 59.95 as a matter of fact. Allergy free, it is a stem winder. It's never happened before. It will never happen again. One weekend only. This weekend, your opportunity to buy a new Ford car or truck at discounts usually reserved for Ford dealership employees. It's called the Inside Deal, and it's only available at three Atlanta locations. Wade Ford in Smyrna, Wade's 1, 2, 3 in Smyrna, and Wade Ford in Buford. Pay exact employee cost on every new and used Wade Ford car in stock. Get an inside deal on every new and used Wade Ford truck in stock. No exceptions. Nothing held back. The inside deal can save you thousands on the Wade Ford car or truck of your choice. Plus, get financing as low as 2.9 or cash back up to $1,500 on select models. But you must act now because Wade Ford's inside deal ends Saturday at close of business. All units sold at employee cost based on first-come, first-served basis. The inside deal only at Wade Ford and Wade's 123, South Cobb Drive in Smyrna and Wade Ford on Highway 20 in Buford. I'm Ludlow Porch, and you're listening to a taped rebroadcast of my show on News Talk Radio AM 750 WS. I want to tell you something. Have you ever heard? I, I, I told Dennis a minute ago, I hate like the dickens call because I get enough air time, and most people resent that even. <laughs> Mainly because me, do... me and Melly's just, we just aren't on the same wavelength. We both fly in different directions. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, well, that's all right. Let me tell you something. You, you like barbecue. Do I like worry? I know, I know. Yeah, I, I saw your license plate yesterday, and it's misnamed. <laughs> Should be hog. <laughs> Should be H A W G G G. -G. Let me tell you, have you ever heard of W W Boss Man's place? No, tell me about that. Oh Lord, my son discovered it some, uh, somewhere out around Glenwood Road, Glenwood Avenue, and Memorial, or Glenwood and uh, Candler. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. What's the name of the place? W W Boss Man. I love it. M A N N. Isn't that something? Yeah. Best barbecue ribs. We had some over the weekend. Lord have mercy, as a friend of mine says, Larapin. <laughs> <laughs> that means you, you eat the bones, too. Yeah. Let me tell you why I call. All right. First of all, I want to echo a lady that you that called you earlier about this spot that I uh, found out from that conversation that you put together on uh, the Christmas Carol and Buckling Up. Right, yeah. What an effective, effective thing. My wife and family have been trying to get me for years to use some sense about using seatbelts. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I never have been blessed with anything more than a one-cell amoeba between my ears. <laughs> and I listened to that, and you you, you scored. Did I make wearing it? Them every, oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, that was just a tremendous, tremendous spot. Well, thank you. Now then, you haven't talked about this in a while, and I've, I've withheld... I want to try to make this as short as I can on this thing about the lottery coming to Georgia. Yeah. I want to get real serious for a minute because I, I would not deny the citizens' rights to vote on this for anything in the world. I think that's an innate right we have. Having said that, the only thing I wish is that when they have it presented to them in whatever form of that amendment comes out, that it would be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, yeah. and not a subterfuge. I have a brother-in-law and a sister-in-law who have been in education in Florida for over 22 years. A lottery went into Florida, as we all know, several years ago. It didn't take but two or three years after that lottery went in as a boon to the financial woes of state education in Florida before the legislature down there cut the budgetary allotments for education, yeah. relying on the lottery to make it up. Real danger. Well, I got news for you. In 1991, the state of Florida had to eliminate or find substitute jobs at lower pay for over 4,000 teachers and administrators. And my sister-in-law was one of them. Mm -hmm. Because the lottery did not do what it was supposed to do 
even with the proviso that there was a percentage of that lottery going to education, unless I see something in that referendum, in that amendment that we're going to have to vote on, mm -hmm. guarantee that gives me 4,000% guarantee that nobody in that gold dome down there is going to mess around with the budget to education and let the lottery money be the, the bonus it's supposed to be. It shows the devil ain't going to get my vote. Because it's a my, misrepresentation. My, yeah, mine either. I've said all the time that, that I'd, I'd like to see us have a lottery if if I could be sure that every nickel of it was, was going to be additional money to educate. That's right. Uh, I'm going to have, I'm going to have uh, spokesmen from both sides because uh, uh, I think that's the way to do it. Well, then but I... To answer questions, and I would welcome you come over here and... Uh, well, I, you know, I'd love to do it, except my boss ain't going to let me. You know that as well as I do. I got in enough trouble seven, eight years ago with he won't, he won't, other company. He won't know you're here. Well, he, <laughs> You sit over in the corner and eat them Let me you sell your network short. Let me tell you something. I'll, let me just make a well, recommendation. I mean, if you don't, I'll if, be if, glad to do it, you know, but I want to suggest somebody to you. You know, I'm a Methodist, and... And the reason I, I know so much about this thing and, and I'm concerned about it is because not only do we raise kids and we got grandkids going through education, but we've been very close to education all of our lives ever since I realized that the principal was spelled with a P-A-L and not a P-L-E. I didn't know whether you knew that or not. That's the head of the school. I told that and you got that free. I'm making notes. I know you are. And that yellow pad that you're never <laughs> without yet. But the head of education... Uh, chairman of the Board of Education in Florida, wrote a letter to the Wesley Christian Advocate, which is a Methodist publication that comes out weekly, trying to explain this to our governor. Now, our governor and I have been friends since 1949. Uh, I know as much about him as he does about me, and we neither one talk too much. And I love him to death. But I don't think he ever read that article, because this was an educator who had been an educator all his life, who was not approaching it, from the moral standpoint, but from the fact that we've just been talking about, it didn't do what it said it was going to do. Yeah, and the people it, were hoodwinked. No, well, I was serious. I, I thought if you wanted to come over here and sit in as an observer and ask questions off the air, you'd, you know you'd be welcome. I'd love to do it. Uh, I'll holler at you in advance. Would you do that? I promise. Go, dog. Take care of your bad self. Hey, you take care, Lud. I'll talk to you, buddy. Thank you for the Bye -bye. time, buddy. Right. Good to talk to you. A few folks outside the Atlanta general area. This guy, sharp guy, one of the long-time uh, television weatherman and a great American and a credit to his mom and daddy. 1-800-572-8255. We're going to talk to T.J. on St. Simons. Hello, T.J. Hello, bro. How you doing? Just fine. Good. Good to hear from you. Let me say, first of all, I signed a petition for parole to run. <clears throat> I contribute to Pat Buchanan. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, I'm not going to vote for either one. they chasing the same rabbit. That's Bush. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to vote for Clinton. I read his letter, and I know people got out of service hand over foot. In fact, I even know what branch of service uh, uh, Reagan served in. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, Ross Perot can run a corporation because he has a hair and fair. Yeah. But you got people up there like Robert Byrd and Sam Nunn and the people who put pretty secure in there, and up there to do something to the country, he can't boss them around. No, he's going to have somebody to re work with the legislator. I said they're going to eat him alive. Uh, they won't eat, uh, they eat parole alive. What they won't it? eat Clinton because they're on the same side. They're for the uh, American people. See, we don't have lobbyists up there for people work on minimum wages. Uh, you keep them down, minimum wages are poor. But those poor people are going to come be knocking your head and get some of your money. They're going to have to get it pretty soon doing it all over the country. But I think what we ought to do is have a freeway race and whoever wins, well and good. I don't think Bush has enough money to buy it again. And speaking of family values, my five year old boy knows the difference between a uh, make believe and real things. I want to let him see the news uh, on TV. It was too horrible for him to see. He can see anything else he wants to because make believe. You know what they ought to do, Ludlow? They ought to charge all three networks. A third, third, and a third to pay for that disaster out there because they didn't show all the tape. They inside it wrapped. Anybody does something good, they show it one time. If it's something else, you know, you have it. I'm not a good explain to my children back when Martin Luther King got killed. 
how did the TV camera get that first for the policeman did when the fellow comes smiling there and uh, had his picture? What do you think, Dell? I couldn't explain Lester Maddox and his son out there with a pistol and a baseball bat keeping somebody out of a cafe to the boy. He couldn't understand that. So don't look at the news. And if you want to enjoy a ride, cut the news off, quit reading, and start reading some good materials about this country back, you know, before we had all this high-tech education. And we had many people to choose from. But when you got a board of education, and when you got a, a teacher to teach teachers another talk, and then we're getting the books out of school. Oh, you got books, but we can't read them anymore. Uh, let me give you some history here. Uh, got, got to go, TJ. I'm out of time, buddy. I hate to interrupt you, but I'm running way late. Call us again, and we'll we'll start this again another time. 1-800-572-TALK. Time is running out. The facts are, Kerry Paul Honda in Snellville has to 6 p.m.